All right. Well, I'm back, and that time it just stopped on me. So I hope you all are still with me. Um, and <laughs> I'm starting over. So I've lost all your comments. Hello, people. Oh, God. And I was telling the story, and uh, hopefully you're all still with me, which means it said I actually lost the live, the video just stopped. Um, so, and I didn't have a chance to hit finish on it, so I've lost the first half of this. Oh, phooey. I'll be glad when we move to a different spot. Anyway, well, I was talking about the guy with unfortunately large nose. Well, anyway, he looked at it, and he looked at it when after I painted the nose smaller, and he says, it doesn't look like me. I says, well, I... I'll, I'll go back and fix it. You know, of course, I'm getting annoyed. So playing with this thing, trying to get it right. I had it right the first time. I went back home, came back two days later, and I had repainted the nose exactly the way I did the first time. He looked at him and went, oh, that's perfect. That That's perfect. That looks just like me. His wife was standing behind him, and she just kind of grinned. But I learned a lesson when doing portraits. Some, actually, it's a kind of a trick sometimes. If you actually like paint a near lobe wrong or just one little thing wrong, because people are very critical and they'll look at it and they'll catch that and say, oh, everything looks great except for this. Oh, I can fix that. You go back and fix it and bring it back. And go, oh, that's great. Anyway. Hey, we're back. Hi, Kevin. <laughs> you, you may be the only, oh, there's four of you. You may be the only people that are on here now. Oh, dear God. It just did it again. So it's going to be one of those days. All right. Very annoying. Debbie, yay. That's what I'd say. If it would just keep going. God. Anyway. I'll paint the other leg. Try to. <laughs> Well, this leg has more of, of, a, of a orange to it, which is funny because I didn't, I never really realized, I never looked at the, at the stretch room painting that closely. There we go, a little bit of white. I keep looking around now to see if I'm still on. <laughs> oh, hi, Edward, Debbie. I'm so glad some of you have come back. <laughs> oh, it's very lonely here now. Uh, a small group. That's okay. Putting a little bit of white highlights here and clean that off and flip that over. Still got a half an hour, come on. Um, okay, go to the uh, beige color, put it on this side. flesh color at least when I'm when I'm turned away from the screen I can hear it ding when somebody else comes up I know I'm still on I'm so sorry I will get it fixed
All right. Take some her number. Go up in here. Soften the edge up a little bit. Drag this a little bit. Bend it. Now I'm on some black. I can go up in here. Maybe too much of a brush, I think. And I'm getting a lot more done now that I've rearranged this setup. Yeah. All right. Haunted Mansion. Yes. Yay. Uh, thank you, Edward. Denise. <laughs> it looks like my knobby knees. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Did you pose for this, Edward? <laughs> now nah, you're better looking than this guy. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oops. Didn't want that color. Okay. Go ahead in here. Number again. Okay. Now, when we get this uh, new house, the first thing we got to do is uh, we're going to put some uh, shutters in my studio. I want people looking in at night. Got to put up some curtains, some shutters. Oh, first. Here. White again. See, now when you see, every time you see the, this figure in a haunted mansion, now you'd be looking at his knees. Uh, uh, yeah. Actually, I thought I was going to be down uh, to painting. I thought I'd have his knees done. I thought I was going to be painting actually the barrel. Uh, but 
they can get there. Try. All right. Now, down below. Oops, I really Let's get some different color. There. About nine minutes. Play. Together. Yeah. All right. So I've I've told you all that what um when I um, paint. I I don't listen. To, well, I'll listen to musicals because I love musicals. But um, but I will put on movies that I've seen. I can't watch a new movie otherwise I wouldn't know what they mean. Um, and um, we watched the Capital Fourth uh, that was just on uh, on the fourth of July. And uh, part of the show, they they did the Star Wars. So anyway, yes. Guess what I was watching, Cassie? <laughs> While I was painting on this yesterday and today. Uh, Star Wars, uh, starting with Rogue One, and then the next three episodes, and then the, then the newest one that Harrison Ford was in again. Um, I just finished watching about an hour and a half before this broadcast. I can't believe I'm still on here. It hasn't gone off. Yay. Um, let's see what's going on. Uh, really looks so great. Thank you, Cassie. Um, Okay, uh, Tina, do you have APO box so I can send you some UK goodies? Oh my gosh, goodies from the UK! Susie and I love the UK. <laughs> I I will I will send you uh, our address. Although unless it gets here quick, I may want to give you the new address right after we move. Anyway, I'll send you a message. Uh, um, when I'm done here, and uh, I don't want to put it on here where everybody can see it. <laughs> have everybody showing up at the house and just well, just come into RJ Studio and watch him paint. The heck with watching it on here. Um, so, <laughs> oh, that's good, Edward. Peeping Tom's talking about needing us needing shutters and and curtains and stuff. Um, <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Tina. I, I'm very excited. That's that's really neat. Um, and okay, hey, whew. now let's uh, switch gears and let's uh, see if I have the, yes, I do. I have the color of the burner. So I will paint those in. And obviously, I've gone to a smaller brush. First little thing hanging down here. I don't know what I forgot what you call these. Hanging down here. So, or why it's even there for that matter. Okay. Then put the black over here. Then we go into some black. Right over the get the black 
get over here. Mary Dirk on this side. Bring back the black of the nose off of the other side of the line. I will be happy to mention some of the uh, websites like uh, Tina Horner's, the, uh, the um, Twisted Miniatures that uh, I look at and think you all should see. And I need to do it with uh, my Swedish cousin in Sweden. Yay. Yes, I am Swedish. And uh, she makes um, hats and jewelry. It's absolutely stunning, and I don't have her website right at the top of my head, so I'll get that next time. You really have to see it. It's really cool stuff. We've been to England four times over the years. Uh, really want to go back. There we go. Now go the other way. So we go to England, and I'm thinking if we're going to do that, I should combine the trip because <clears throat> I've wanted to connect with um, Swedish family in Sweden. Swedish grandparents came over, went to Ellis Island. And, uh, gee, God, it was 1915 or something like that. Um, and uh, and I had four daughters and two boys, and of course my dad was the second oldest of the group, and, uh, and actually I spoke Swedish until I was uh, about five years old and we moved away from uh, this area that we're in, that I'm in now, uh, which was, uh, I was born in Aurora, <laughs> we're moving back to Aurora, it's like full circle after all these years, uh, but uh, but we didn't live in Aurora. We actually lived in St. Charles, which is the next town over on the Fox River. Beautiful area. And, uh, but we lost touch with all the Swedish relations. And uh, Ava. It's been so much fun because she's sent all kinds of pictures. We've been sending pictures back and forth with the families and trying to give her as much info as I can on, uh, on our family, um, on my father, his brothers and sisters. So we hope to go there. Um, so we should make it a combined trip to go to England and go to Sweden. Of course, I have to make a lot of money first. All right, let's see what else is everybody saying. Um, how about a famous haunted mansion painting with my face on it? <laughs> and we're, it's, I've done that. I've, <laughs> I've had people ask me to put their faces on uh, some Disney characters, and it doesn't work unless they look like the Disney character. It comes out very bizarre, so I'm, I'm reluctant to do that. Uh, I'm, 
Haunted Mansion would be great. I mean, you could do a figure of the Haunted Mansion. Cartoon characters. Ah. Um, but <laughs> that would be funny. In black light, right? We'll make it so it glows in the black light. We turn the black light on. Um, oh, thank you, Tina. Come on over to the UK. We will look after you. Um, now we have to come. <laughs> uh, oh, Debbie. Uh, I, I Okay, I remember visiting the museum in Chicago as a young girl and loved the miniature house room. It was awesome. Yes, that uh, that huge, huge miniature house built back in the uh, early 1900s. Um, I, I can't remember what it's called now, but it's a main feature at the Museum of Science and Industry. So, see? Tina, you have to come over here because you haven't seen that. You should look up the Chicago Museum of Science and Industry and look up the dollhouse and see it. It's phenomenal. So now you have to come to Chicago so we can show you that. Um, and, and Cindy, got to watch your you paint today. Well, thank you. Uh, and I'm glad so many of you came back after I lost the feed on this crazy thing. Uh, Kevin, are you coming out to D23 Expo next week? Uh, uh, sadly, no. Uh, I'd love to come to a D23, my wife and I both, uh, certainly with our books, but um, maybe next year. Oh, Tina, I, I would love that. Oh, you would. You would. It's fabulous. It's absolutely, absolutely fabulous and a great museum. For all of you who have never been to Chicago, it's the one of the greatest cities in the See, I went off. This thing knows when I'm trying to say something. <laughs> it's actually skyscrapers were uh, invented in Chicago, not New York. Sorry, New York. We did it first. And then a lot of your first skyscrapers were done by Chicago architects. Um, but it's uh, it's a beautiful city, uh, very clean, a lot of fun, a lot of neat things to see, and great museums, the Museum of Science and Industry being one of them. Yeah, we love going down there. Uh, okay, let me actually paint. And on this side, turn that up. Okay. Hey. Sucks. How much time do I have? Nine minutes. Hey, I can do socks. Fast socks. There we go. Get the bigger brush. <laughs> um, oh, you should do painting classes. Uh, holidays, that would be a dream come true. Yeah, I, oh God, that would be actually fun. I, uh, uh, at one point, about 15 years ago, I was working with a, a guy who was from France and he was taking tours uh, groups back to France. And uh, we got talking about my actually going along with them and doing it as a, uh, all the people that would go on the tour would be people that paint and we would take them to Provence and everything else. But that never, never happened. Um, Oh, Debbie, you're talking, oh, yes, about the dollhouse. Yeah, you picked up phones and listened as you went around the dollhouse because it was so big. Um, that was huge. And you picked up a phone and listened to uh, a description of the different rooms in the dollhouse. Um, and you have an illustrated book of it? Yes, we have the same book. I love that. So, and if you've just joined in or wondering, uh, uh, Tina Horner from the UK, uh, the reason all this got talking about the dollhouse owns a site uh, on uh, called twistedminiatures.com. She and her sister do beautiful work. So check that out. Now, socks. Socks. No, I'm not a Sox fan. Although I did root for the Chicago White Sox when they played in the World Series some years ago. But I'm a Cubs fan. I don't watch baseball all the time. 
but obviously I watched it when they played the World Series. Yay. Uh, so, a little funny story there. I've only been in Wrigley Stadium twice. Uh, the last time was a few years ago. We went with some friends and sat along the third baseline and watched a game, which this was before the national championship year and the Cubs lost. Oh, well. Uh, and uh, But the time before was back when I was eight years old, so that would have been uh, 1952. My dad and a friend of his took myself and, and the guy's young son, the same age as me, we were friends, and we went to see the Chicago Bears play the, the Los Angeles Rams in Wrigley Field. That's where the Chicago Bears played all their games until I think it was 1980 or something like that when they finally moved to uh, Soldier Field. Weird, huh? Uh, so, yeah, only been in there twice. I like to watch uh, the games and stuff on TV. I can be comfortable. Um, I gotta tell you, this is funny. We're we're good friends with uh, um, Mike Rizzioni and, and Donna and uh, his kids. We've known Mike uh, since he was uh, won the gold medal as the captain of the Olympic hockey team in 1980. Uh, there's a story behind that too, and why we know we got to know each other right after that happened. But uh, anyway. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> that was good, RJ. Start to start to say something and forget what it was. Um, why was I talking about Mike? I don't know. Maybe a little. Um, um, Oh, Tina, yes, it is still at the museum. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think they refurbished it uh, just a few years back. Um, so anyway. Oh, I know what I was saying why I brought up Mike Ruzioni. Uh, it's because uh, Mike, uh, I asked him when uh, Boston, because he lives in Boston, if he, when Boston was going for the, the cup, if he was going to be at the stadium or to watch and went, yeah, oh heck no, I don't go to those anymore. I stay at home and watch. It's a lot more fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm the, I'm the same way. I prefer to stay at home and watch it on the big screen TV. But I'm a big, Suzanne and I are big football fans. Of course, we watch the Bears and hope that they're going to get better. But we are big University of Miami fans, which is where I went to school in, in uh, Miami, Florida. And, I do get a little frustrated when I can't see games and I refuse to pay extra money for ESPN. So I survive. Besides, the team's winning, they're on more. Okay, you all don't want to hear about football. I'm sorry. Susanna's a big football fan, too, though. We're not basketball fans. Go ahead, somebody say something. <laughs> uh. 
soccer fan. Heard a ding on the. Is somebody going to say something? Why not? Uh, I can start a real controversy here. I don't like basketball because um, I'm not impressed by people who are tall enough to stick their hand inside a basket. I'm much more amazed at people who can make shots at that basket, or any kind of a shot, um, and make it in difficult situations. Anybody? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, and Yankees. So, Yankees. Okay, fine. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Great team. Um, anyway. <laughs> Are you using the black to shade the socks? Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, I am. I, I got so busy talking about sports. To slap some sense into myself. Yes, I just used the uh, the uh, purple color that I mixed with uh, some red and blue and some white, and uh, and that's uh, actually brilliant red and ultramarine blue and some white, and that was my base color, and I'm using white uh, and that base. Sorry, I went away for a second. We should stop doing it. Uh, but anyway, yes, that's black. And uh, we're, oops, there goes the timer. That means that I've been on almost an hour without, because of the stupid breaks. So um, actually, I'm going to stay on a little bit longer. Uh, if that's all right with you all because uh, I was cut off about 25 minutes into the first part of this telecast and lost it. Okay, here. Um, okay. Tina, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, I know. It gets me in trouble sometimes. Um, oh, Michelle, I agree with you on basketball. Yeah, thank you. So <laughs> I find other sports more entertaining. Yes, me too. Um, oh, yeah, one more time. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> thank you, Cassie. Uh, anyway, okay, let's, let's, let's paint the spats. Now I'm going to start with some, some white. And I've already mixed some gray, which is just white and uh, um, titanium white and ivory black mixed together for the gray. But I'll paint in the white sections here first. Now, anytime I I paint, I will put a um, base colors on first it helps in coverage too you also can uh, see how, what you're doing with your colors uh, but it also gives you a base to work on um, so with acrylics especially, you put that first layer of paint on there uh, and it dries, it parts of, at different places, it'll, it'll pull apart. And you have little spots where you'll have, you'll see it, uh, where it has, isn't covered anymore. And of course, then when you go in and do the, the final uh, layer of paint on there, you're covering all those up and catching all that and it gives you a nice base. So, okay, I got that on. To the gray, which is down here, and I'm going to drink from my Fantasia mug, which is now cold coffee. 
Oh, it's still good. Um, flavor with peppermint mocha. Yeah. Excuse me for a minute. I'm back. <laughs> Dropping lids. <laughs> Uh, yes, love flavored coffee. Okay. Now we get the gray here. Here first. I'm going to have to lighten this gray up a little bit so that. Put it on and I'll just take some white and run it over it. And uh, there we go. I don't have spats, but I have spectator shoes. I just bought some new ones uh, a few weeks back. Oh, you may have seen them when I posted a picture of us at the uh, Colby Awards, uh, where Suzanne and I both won uh, some awards. I won two of them for scenic design, and she won for uh, assistant directing Elephant Man, which is one of the ones I won. But I was wearing my new spectator shoes, black and white shoes. I love to wear those when I dance. The only one problem, I can't. I'm not a very good dancer. Which, sadly, has, uh, I mean, I can, I can slow dance. My wife and I can be slow dance. I can do that. But, uh, I have two left feet when it comes to dancing, which is sad since Suzanne is a dancer or was a dancer. Her dancing career ended at Disney when she was in characters and she had to be a dancer in characters. Uh, if you've read our books, Together in a Dream and Remembering the Magic, uh, she talks about being in characters and of course the accident that wrecked her knees and they uh, when a guest got mad because the it started to rain and the dwarf unit suzanne was was doing sleepy the dwarf um had to go in because those costumes are already heavy as they are and if uh, they get wet they're even worse and it takes forever to dry them out they do have backups, but still, you don't want them to get wet. And so the woman, woman wanted them to stop for a picture, and they, they said, no, we have to go in. Snow White said, I'm sorry, ma'am. As they're walking away, the woman runs up behind Susie and, and pushes her and knocks her to the ground. It happened so fast. Susie went down on the ground straight onto her knees and just totally damaged uh, all the tendons and muscles in her. Nasty woman. People will do the dumbest things sometimes. Of course, we got that in the attractions where people try to steal things. <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite part is when they take stuff out of an, out of an attraction and try to walk out the front gate. Um, like the guy who ripped off Dopey's head and uh, actually ripped it off. I mean, the head was huge. We're talking, you know, just bigger around. And uh, you know, they were dwarfs were going up the stairs and, and Dopey was at the bottom. And the guy jumped out of the car in uh, Snow White's Adventure and 
a guy must have been strong as ever because he had a fiberglass head and he twisted it, ripped it off, and then tried to walk out the front gate with it. And they stopped him. And of course, they called back to tell us and also supervision that the, the ride got shut down right away. The guy took off. But uh, he got arrested and thrown in the jail, which is over Main Street. Yes, there is a jail over Main Street. If you ever want to see it, just get arrested on Disney property. Um, that he said he bought it in one of the shops. He wanted him to ignore all the shredded fiberglass around the bottom of the of his head. So what we did to uh, prevent that from happening again, we decided, we, of course, they took Dopey out right away, the maintenance people, uh, auto animatronic maintenance, and brought it back to our studio buying Small World. And they uh, uh, reopened the ride. You just didn't have Dopey in it. Uh, and then the next day, we uh, reattached his head and patched it all up and repainted it. But what we did first, we decided to take a, a long steel rod, it was about three, three and a half, four feet high. Anyway, it went up into his head. So what we did first, right in the middle of my stories, I'm getting really upset with this thing. But we. We poured resin and put fiberglass in the top of that. We had shredded fiberglass. And then when that's set up, then we put it inside the body of Dopey, which was hollow inside, and we put that rod down in. Now the thing, there was no way they could take the head off it. But the thing was, <laughs> maintenance people about kill us. They went to put it in the next night when the, or that night when the attractions were closed. And we got this note the next morning that says, what did you do to Dopey? He weighs a ton. We went, really? Hmm, that's interesting. We never did tell him what we did. So, <laughs> okay. Um, oh, yeah, more time. <laughs> Great. Um, oh, hi, Jeffrey. You're having a monsoon in, in, in Indianapolis? I'm sorry. Yeah. That can't be fun. Um, you're breaking up because of the storm. I'll have to check it out later. Okay. Uh, if you're still on for the moment, yeah, I'd mind. Maybe it's a storm in Indy <laughs> because I keep losing my feed here. Um, uh, Tina, such sad news how one person can damage your career. Yes. And that was unfortunate that, that happened. Um, Stephanie, uh, hi from Germany. Oh, that's very cool. Um, my, uh, our daughter in law. Sandy was born in Germany, lived there for the first five years of, of her life. Uh, she's an American citizen, but her mother was a, is a famous singer. And uh, if, I'm going to mention this because you might know uh, it's uh, Peggy March. She comes back over to Germany to do shows all the time. That's our, and any of you listening or are on this right now, you're going, Peggy March, Peggy March. She was known as little Peggy March in the 60s, and she's still performing. She had uh, three songs in the top 40s, one, two in the top 10. And of course, I Will Follow Him uh, was number one for quite a few weeks. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, I, you're working all those stories. Oh, thank you, Stephanie. I, I try. If this wouldn't stop cutting off, that would be great. I, actually, I'm going to end up being on an hour and a half because I'm already at 44 minutes on this. I was on for a half an hour and then lost the total feed. And so I just picked up from there. And so I've been talking for an hour and a half. Coffee. All right. Let's get the other spat going. Spat. Not the cool spats. Whoever came up with the word spats? What a. I want to know these things. The guy who invented them called Spats, that's his name. 
John Spence. You have to be careful what you invent. You don't want your name attached to it sometime. Okay. I think Spence would be cool. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in with some white here. These Haunted Mansion paintings are, are actually um, very loose uh, in the brushwork. Uh, it's almost a um, impressionistic style, slightly impressionistic. Some realism and some impressionism, uh, but you see it in the brush, the brush strokes and the brushwork. I'm a big fan of impressionism. Impressions of paintings over the years. I'm trying to remember to speak up because I'm my my voice is getting tired. Uh, <laughs> Suzanne is upstairs, probably wondering what happened to me. She said, "God, it should have been done by now." Nope, just down here doing my thing. What I'm going to do is this here. Dry brush and white back in a minute. Um, interesting thing here. Uh, I don't know if you've noticed that in looking at his shorts, there's there's yellow in there. Um, same thing with um, his shirt and his his. Uh... Anybody ever wonder what he's holding? Is it a menu? Is it instructions of how to get off of the barrel that's about to blow up? I've never thought about that until I did this painting. I'm going like, what is that? He's holding his death certificate, I guess. I who knows. Um, so, <laughs> um, uh, it, well, it's crazy that someone will do it to others. Oh yes, yeah, it is crazy what people will do. Um, injuring people. Actually, the, the character department, that's why when you see characters now, because they did unionize, and uh, oh, there's the guy. Uh, they, uh, one of the things was that they weren't protected well enough. Uh, nobody was out there with them. And so now when you see, on rare occasion, the characters in the park, if you look around, there is an employee uh, or a assistant supervisor or somebody nearby to protect them uh, from guests who do really weird things and seem to like think it's fun to beat up on characters in costume. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> the uh, sad thing is, I'm, I'm putting in just a little touch of the view. For many years, uh, know that it used to be when you walked in the park, there were the many you walked into Magic Kingdom, there were characters there that you could just run up to and take pictures with and everything. And different parts of the park, you'd be going around and uh, seeing Mickey Mouse uh, walking by, you could run up to him and get pictures. That was fun. And unfortunately, uh, because of the union, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not upset with them having a union because they were underpaid and so they got better pay. I think that was, that was a good thing. But uh, unfortunately, they complained about being in the hot weather because uh, it gets up to 130 degrees inside a costume. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, also certain people like Eisner just thought it would be great to start having photo places. So you have two types of characters now. You uh, people that work in characters, you have the 
performers, which they are in, or if they're in costume or in characters, they dance and perform uh, in shows like in front of the castle. They also are the ones that are in the parades. The figures are all the characters that you see in the photo areas where you have to stand in line forever to get a picture with them. They are not dancers, uh, they're not performers, they just stand there and get their picture taken all day long, which Suzanne said she would find that very boring. You can't animate, you can't get out, react with the, the people. When she did Smee, uh, she always was with Captain Hook when she did that character. And Captain Hook would chase her around. <laughs> it's just, they just have all kinds of fun. Not anymore. All right, so we got those done. I'm, I have no idea. Let's, oh, what have we got here? 51 minutes on this, this. Okay, we'll go a few more minutes. I will um, do his little trim on his shoes here. So tomorrow morning I will uh, Finish this up, Cassie. Because <laughs> all I have left to paint is the tassels and the uh, finish the dynamite barrel and candle. So, here's a here's a neat thing. This is uh, you get to see the edge of the. I may need a smaller brush. You get to see the edge of his sole by the front of it, and it's in a gray. All the humor you see in the attraction um, at, the, at the Disney parks is because of Mark Davis who was our boss, but she was at the studios um, in Hollywood. He would come out every so often, as did Waythel Rogers, who was also our boss. When they weren't, when they weren't there, I mean, which was, they weren't there that much, um, we were our own bosses. We were management. We had a neat little thing as of being in management too, because we, we were paid a salary. Uh, of course, the danger when you're paid a salary is then they can have you work, work as many hours as they want you to work. Then you don't get more pay. We were the only managers in all of Disney that actually had a written into our Assign, uh, well, our description of what we did, it was set up that we worked actually a seven and a half hour day, five days a week, Monday through Friday. And if we worked overtime, it had to be approved before we did it because we got time and a half. So consequently, they never wanted us to work overtime because we were getting really good pay. <laughs> And although we did do it one time, we were doing a rehab on uh, Carousel of Progress, which was a lot of fun because Mark Davis uh, came out for that, uh, as did Waythel and John Hench was there. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. But it was a three-week rehab, and I don't remember who thought of this. Uh, I think it was Lee of the four of us, but thought it would be a great idea if we actually, uh, two of us worked uh, from 3.30 until before until midnight 
and the other two had worked a normal day shift, which was Jay and Lee. So Tom and I had that, that late shift. Uh, and so we were getting um, actually paid, no, we worked longer. We worked 12 hours this, so did Jane and Tom, or Jane and, and Lee in the daytime. We kind of overlapped for four hours. So we were getting a 12 hour day for three weeks. By the end of the first week, even though we were making really good money, we wanted them to stop. Please don't make us do this anymore. It was long hours. It got to be really tiring. So we decided after that to never suggest again that we work overtime. So, hey, there you go. All right, that's that's a good place to stop right there and take a gulp of my cold coffee. That's still good even cold. I like iced coffee too. I'll take my glass. Oh, look, RJ has eyes. <laughs> okay, everybody. And again, like I said, I'm going to tip this up. See, there's there he is there. <laughs> okay. Thank you all for joining me. Oh, let me look real quick. Um, oh, wait. You're, oh, you're talking about what he was holding. Um, I guess a menu. I, that's what I'm thinking. He's holding a note saying, Watch RJ at, <laughs> I'm going to put my glasses back on. It's, that's good. Holding a note saying, watch RJ at 10 p.m. UK <laughs> That's good, Tina. <laughs> but maybe I can turn that note around and read it. Um, he could be holding a speech. Yes, and it is needed, sadly. Um People ruin it for other people just because they pay to get in. They think they can do what they want to the characters. Yeah, actually, we've 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 talked about this for uh, the years we were working there, and since that, uh, we think people think that uh, because they're a cartoon character, and in cartoons the characters can bend, shove, push, whatever, and crazy stuff, that uh, they lose their reality and forget that there's a real person inside the costume. Suzanne. Um, over the time she was in characters, um, um, of course, had her both her knees wrecked. Uh, she had an eight-year-old uh, break her finger when she was in Smee, uh, and the mother thought it was very funny, and uh, bent her finger backwards when she went to shake the kid's hand and wouldn't let go until Susie grabbed his finger and bent it the other way, and he finally let go. But by then, he had snapped her finger. Uh, she had a... a uh, a, a guy, uh, actually a grown, I think 16, 17 year old, uh, punch her character face of Sleepy. And it, of course, the face of uh, the part of it is about six, seven inches, uh, well, maybe not that, about four or five inches from her, from her face. But there was a ridge that was right in line with her nose. And when he hit her, of course, inside she went forward and the costume went back and it hit her there and broke her nose. And she went off set and was going to first aid. One of the managers said, where are you going? And she's got the head off and blood streaming down her face. <laughs> he says, you're not done with your set. She goes, I don't care. <laughs> she, she didn't get fired, but it was stupid. It could have at least let me say goodbye. <laughs> I will be back next Friday. Uh, and actually, I'm not sure what I'll be working on, but I do have, of course, plenty of paintings to work on. So thank you all for joining me. We actually got an hour in after the half hour. And uh, I will see you next week. Everybody have a great week, a great weekend. And keep all your Disney dreams close to your heart. Bye-bye. And I go to the finish and work.